first we are going to prepare the sugar syrup for this take 2 cups of sugar in a saucepan to this add 1 cup of water keep the flame on medium and wait till the sugar is completely dissolved the sugar is completely dissolved i'm just going to remove the layer of scum that's formed on the top turn off the stove and to make sure that the sugar syrup does not crystallize i'm just going to add a few drops of lemon juice next to enhance the flavors of the sugar syrup i'm going to add quarter teaspoon cardamom powder a few strands of saffron half teaspoon rose essence just mix everything together the sugar syrup is done i'm going to keep this aside now i'm going to make the jamuns for the jamun i've taken 200 grams of unsweetened koya so just crumble this you can see it's nice and soft so this i'm going to grate 100 grams of paneer to this add 3 tablespoons of maida or all purpose flour and knead everything together till it's all well combined so i've kneaded this for about 10 minutes you can see it's all well combined if you feel your dough is very dry you can just add a little milk maybe 1 teaspoon of milk to get it together but i haven't added any milk the dough is fine for me here so i'm just going to start rolling them into jamuns take a little bit of the dough you can take a desired shape or size if you like once the oil is hot reduce the flame to a low and start frying the jamuns because if it's too hot the jamuns can quickly change color and they may not be cooked inside cook till you get a nice dark color the jamuns have come to a nice rich dark brown color removed from the oil and directly place it into the sugar syrup the sugar syrup has to be a little warm while placing the jamuns into the syrup make sure you let it soak in the syrup for about 2 hours minimum next time you're craving for something sweet you can try this kala jamun recipe so the key is to soak it in sugar syrup for a minimum of 2 hours and then you can actually refrigerate it for about 2 to 3 days it will be good and you can actually surprise your family and friends with this lovely kala jamun recipe so do try and enjoy it I'm using one and a half cups of cashew nuts. Grind it to a nice fine powder. Make sure it's nicely powdered. Don't grind it for too long because the oil from the cashew nuts can be released and they can become very sticky. Keep the powdered cashews aside. So first, I'm going to melt the sugar. For this, take half cup water, three fourth cup sugar. add a little carbon powder the sugar is completely dissolved now i'm going to add the powdered cashew nuts keep the flame on low throughout this process keep mixing make sure everything is completely dissolved and well combined a couple of things to be taken into account is to keep the flame on low throughout the process now you have to keep stirring and mixing the cashew paste continuously so that the mixture doesn't stick to the bottom of the pan or doesn't brown and it has to be done slowly as the cashew paste is thickening add 2 teaspoons of ghee So as you can see the cashew paste has come together beautifully it's become a nice thick mass and it's not sticking to the sides anymore so when the mixture cools down it should have more of a doughy consistency so it's very hot but once it cools it'll have a nice doughy consistency and it'll be easy to roll it so before transferring the cashew paste to a surface where we're going to work with make sure you use a butter paper this is very helpful brush some ghee on the butter paper The cashew paste has become nice and thick and doughy. So if you can see it's like more like a chapati dough. Now as the mixture cools down it will become thick and nice. Brush it with a little ghee. Close it with the butter paper and roll it out using a rolling pin. Make sure you roll it out when the mixture is still hot. Grease the knife with a little ghee.
surprise your family with this delicious kaju cutlies. We're going to boil about one liter of milk. Milk has reduced, become nice and thick. 200 grams finely grated paneer. Give it a quick mix. 200 grams of koya or koa. This is unsweetened. Cook this mixture till you get a lovely thick consistency. Add a teaspoon of cardamom powder. So let this mixture become nice and thick and dry. One cup of sugar now. The consistency is perfect. There's no extra moisture left. Become nice and thick and dry. Just grease it a little bit with ghee. Now I've divided this mixture into two equal parts. One part is going to be the plain mixture. I'm going to put it into the tray and just press it gently and spread it across the tray. I've taken about one tablespoon of hot milk and I'm going to mix a little cocoa powder to this. Pour this diluted cocoa paste into the mixture. Got this lovely chocolate color now. So I'm going to add the chocolate mixture on top. Spread it out evenly on all sides. So finally garnish it with chopped pistachios. These are the unsalted pistachios. Gently move it across. Since it's very soft, they just instantly stick. Let this sit and set for about one to two hours, room temperature. And you can just refrigerate it for some time. You can cut it into pieces. So now you know how to make this. If you were thinking that it's a complicated uh, recipe and uh, how do I make this? Well, now you have the recipe. You can try it at home. It's quite simple. So you just have to do it slowly and patiently and it's delicious. So do try and enjoy. You can get a copy of our first edition of the home cooking book on 21 Frames.